Let's talk about the murder of his son for a moment. His son was murdered on July 4th of 2008. And Angela will tell you, Angela Hicks will tell you, that in the days before the funeral service, she saw the defendant standing over the urn of his son's ashes. And she heard him say, I hope God didn't let this happen because of Janelle Matthews. Wow. Let, let, me, let me explain a little bit of what you just heard. That was an alleged statement made by Steve Pankey. He's the defendant facing murder charges for the 1984 murder of Janelle Matthews. Now, the defendant's own son murdered in 2008, and the prosecutor describing what the defendant's wife or ex-wife at this point will testify to, that he is standing over the urn of his murdered son saying, I hope God didn't do this because of Janelle Matthews. That was 2008. It wasn't until 2019 that Janelle Matthews Remains were finally discovered, and now here we are with Steve Pankey being charged and on trial for that murder. Let's take a listen to more of the prosecutor's powerful opening statement. On October 5th of 2019, in an unsolicited message to television reporters in Boise, Idaho, the defendant for the first time commented upon the ethnicity of Janelle. And he wrote in this message, Hispanic 12-year-old Janelle Matthews disappeared from her Greeley, Colorado home December 20th, 1984. Her body was miraculously found in July of 2019 in an area known and regularly patrolled by law enforcement. Whether her death was first degree, second degree, or third degree murder, she tragically lost her life. The innocent, Janelle, and her birth mother, Terry Martinez. In August of 2019, Janelle was buried with human dignity. The community deserves to know why. And then in the same message, he goes on to identify the people that he believes are persons of interest that should be looked at in Janelle's disappearance. Russ Ross, Mayor John Gates, Greeley Police Chief Mark Jones, and the defendant. He named himself as a person of interest. Are you kidding me? This is unreal. Unreal. Let's bring back in the think tank. Have you ever seen anything like this? A piece of evidence? Kirk Nurmi, where the defendant names himself as a person of interest? Well, I guess, you know, it reminds me a little bit, Vinny, and, and, uh, of the happy face killer, right? He wanted to make sure that he got credit for this. Now, this guy is either of that elk or just completely crazy because it, we keep in mind he listed what the mayor, the police chief, et cetera, et cetera. We're not giving any credence to those assertions, but we're giving credence to the assertions that he made against himself. So to me, that makes this case not on the st firm ground that it seems to be portrayed to be by the state. Yes, he said a lot of things, but again, this is a guy who said a lot of crazy things and by his own defense attorney's admission, this guy says crazy things and does crazy stuff. So I don't think the case is as open and shut as it might be being portrayed so far. He's also run for governor a couple times. Yeah. Unbelievable. Eklund, what do you think of that karma statement where he's, his own son tragically is murdered on, on, on July 4th, 2008, and he is there allegedly over the urn and, and saying, I hope God didn't do this because of Janelle Matthews. Yeah, I think he went full narcissist to think about yourself, like standing over your son's urn. Um, he just, he is diabolical, hence why he probably ran for governor. Um, he is not well. Uh, he has a problem. And like just the amount of evidence and how succinct it is, is, is just mind blowing. He, he went full narcissist. Nima, would you consider those two statements confessions i would Vinny. but let's talk about this case and how eerily it is similar to a recent case 40 year old cold case murder really bad admissions from an older white male criminal defendant the defense in their opening statement saying that this is asperger's this is someone who acts and says strange things 
eerily similar to Bob Durst. Um, but what they have in this case that they didn't have with Durst is Norris Black, who lived across the street. So they have another suspect. But I got to agree with Kirk on this one. It's a much tougher case than I think the prosecution is making it out to be. These cold cases always are. Yeah, by the way, uh, Bob Durst, tomorrow, uh, judgment day, sentencing day for him. Um, let's take a listen now to the defense. What's the response to all of this in, in the opening statement? Take a listen. Mr. Pankey has never hidden his interest in the Janelle Matthews case. Um, he, uh, he went to the police early on. Um, he, he spoke to them. He, he loves these true crimes cases. Um, you know, people really like this stuff, you know, and, um, you know, that's, it's a, it's a legitimate sort of hobby, if you will. Um, and, and this is what he likes. This is what he likes. Um, and so this happened in, in his town, um, you know, at a time when he lived there, and, and it was interesting to him. It was interesting to him. So, you know, he, he got involved. And the, one of the reasons he got involved was because the third, third thing I say there, which is, and we sort of talked about this abstract, abstractly during voir dire, but he is a busybody. Steve Pankey is a busybody. He gets into people's business, all right? And again, I'm not here to say that that's a great quality, and I think we are kind of all agreed during voir dire that it's probably not, but that's who he is. He gets, he gets in the middle of things. Um, and when it comes to these, these true crime situations, he's particularly interested and he gets particularly involved. So, and why does he do that? Well, you're going to hear that he does have a condition called Asperger's syndrome in which, you know, his mind doesn't process information uh, exactly the same way that, you know, sort of a conventional brain would do so. And it, and he processes information a little differently and that causes him to get in the middle of these, of these cases. All right, I love true crime fans, by the way. Hundreds of thousands of them, right? Uh, you know, on, on, on social media and watching every night here. Um, but, but Nima, could someone be that obsessed with true crime and, and, and because of this condition that he has involving Asperger's somehow put himself in the middle of something that he has nothing to do with? Is that even possible? I mean, it certainly is possible that someone can develop an obsession with something, whether you have autism or Asperger's or anything on the spectrum. Obviously, the prosecution here, they have more evidence than that. He did allegedly rake the footprints and destroy evidence. He knew information that, frankly, wasn't public and no one else had. So I understand why this is being prosecuted really all the signs point to one individual, despite what the defense says. So it's more than his obsession uh, with Janelle and this particular case. The state has a lot more evidence than that here. All right, the trial continues, folks. This is an interesting one. It's a cold case. Has it been solved, or did this guy just put himself in the middle of it? Uh, the jury will ultimately let us know.